escaping me. We're going to go over chapter 21, disconnection. Okay, we're going to go over that. We're going to go over this topic. This topic here, it says Leah has been broadcasting that Scientology disconnects families. She has been providing this narrative for a while. According to Leah's former show, she was obsessed with talking about disconnection in Scientology and how it tears family apart. Tears families apart, right? An example would be if you have an alcoholic uncle who is mean, steals from you, constantly gets into trouble with the law, and generally rejects any of your help. If you should decide that that person is no longer worth your time, you might say that you might say that's that's it, and just break off any contact with them. This is an example of what they term a horrible disconnector or a horrible disconnection, right? Scientology doesn't interfere with families, relationships, or marriages. Scientology as an entity doesn't involve itself in personal affairs. The, pers the purpose of the church is to allow people to look at situations and life in a safe and free manner that lets them continue well, to come to any conclusion that is best for them and doesn't hurt others. Lear Maney and Mike Rinder have provided this narrative to their viewers. Disconnection isn't enforced. Disconnection isn't an official policy in the church. Now, this is from the Church of Scientology International. This is the statement that they make. Start a quote. There is no Scientology disconnection policy that requires church members to disconnect from anyone, let alone family and friends who simply have different beliefs. To the contrary, the moral code of Scientology mandates that Scientologists respect the religious beliefs of others. The church encourages excellent family relationships, Scientologists or not, and family relations routinely improve with Scientology because the Scientologist learns how to increase communication and resolve any problems that may have previously existed. End of quote. Church of Scientology International. Um, disconnecting with someone who is unfavorable to your religious belief and practices after attempts at taking, uh, talking it over, finding a solution and just respecting the differences. This is when the individual is being attacked, suppressed, or persuaded to leave something that he or she loves to be involved in. Maybe you have someone in your life that is constantly negative and won't respect any of your wishes. That's the same thing. And it doesn't have doesn't just have to be about religion. It can be about work. It can be about your purpose. It could be about your hobbies. It could be about whatever, right? Disconnection isn't as bad as it sounds. Leo and Mike are making it seem like it is forced upon them. It is solely up to the individual Scientologist. Wherever the Scientologist is in Scientology, it is solely their decision. This is what Alron Hubbard states about it. Start a quote. The term handle most commonly means to smooth out a situation with another person by applying the technology of communication. The term disconnection is defined as a self-determined decision made by an individual that he is not going to be, be connected to another. It is, it is a severing of a communication line. The basic principle of handle or disconnect exists in any group, and ours is no different. It is much like trying to deal with a criminal. If he will not handle, the society resorts to the only other solution. It disconnects the criminal from society. In other words, they remove the guy from society and put him in a prison because he won't handle this problem or otherwise cease to commit criminal acts against others. End of quote. I run Hubbard. A, a person is simply exercising their right to communicate. That is what they are practicing, as Mr. Hubbard further states. Um, start a quote. If one has the right to communicate, then one must also have the right to not receive communication from another. It is this letter of the right to communicate that gives us our right to privacy. Corollary of the right to communicate that gives us our right to privacy. Alan Hubbard. People have rights. Scientologists have rights. Their rights aren't to be taken away by those who wish to cause them harm. Alan Hubbard wrote this in accordance with other religions' references involving disconnection. Scientologists aren't to disconnect from family members, friends, and co-workers because of their religious belief and practice. 
This is contrary to the belief of Scientology. Respect the religious beliefs of others. It isn't unusual to allow someone the right to not communicate with someone who is causing them trouble. I wouldn't want to be forced to communicate with someone who harassed me every day. How about the wife that is being beaten on a daily basis? Should this wife continue to get beaten up? Should she continue to be involved with this person despite that she is being beaten? This is from Dr. Men, uh, Dr. Benjamin J. Hubbard, professor of comparative religions at California State University, Fullerton. He looked at the Scientology's right to disconnection and compared it with other religious practices. And this is what Dr. Hubbard found. Start a quote. On the basis of my comparison of the practice of disconnection within Scientology to similar practices within other con contemporary faiths, I see no reason to single out this religion as espousing unique or bizarre rituals for separating a disruptive person from the community of believers. Such a community is held together by common agreements on right and wrong conduct and methods for preserving its integrity. All faiths ha have this attribute, attribute in one form or another. The policies of the Church of of, the, of Scientology in this regard are by no means unique and fall well within the spectrum of acceptable conduct. End of, end of quote. My acknowledgement goes to Dr. Hubbard for com comparing it, coming out with a statement, and sharing the truth. Now, I'm gonna, I want to go over just like two or three other religions I have in front of me in this book, okay? Um, but I also wanted to just read you this one statement from the church regarding this connection, okay? And then we'll go on to, you know, the other religions. So here it is. Scientologists practice this connection as a last resort after all other avenues of reconciliation have been exhausted. In Scientology, inclusion rather than exclusion is performed. As with other faiths, the Scientology, the Scientology practice does not involve disconnecting from people because they have different beliefs. Scientologists live and work on a daily basis with Jews, Protestants, um, Catholics, Mormons, Muslims, Hindus, Buddhists, and atheists. Scientologists are taught to respect the religious beliefs of others. End of quote. That's Scientology's statement in regards to disconnection. Jehovah Witnesses um, also, you know, also go along with this. Um, this is what they have to say on it, okay? So Jehovah, Jehovah Witnesses use a practice known as disfellowshipping. The shunned person is not to be acknowledged in everyday life or at their Sunday services. This is, um, what of a man who is disfellowshipped, but whose wife and children are still Jehovah Witnesses? The religious ties he had with his family change, but blood ties remain. The marriage relationship and normal family affection and dealings continue. These fellowship individuals may attend our religious services if they wish. They may also receive our spiritual counsel from the congregation elders. The goal is to help each, each individual once more to qualify to be one of the Jehovah's Witnesses. These fellowship people who reject improper conduct and demonstrate a sincere desire to, be, to live by the Bible standards are always welcome to become members of the congregation again. JehovahWitnesses.org it's exactly what happens with the church. You can go into Introduction to Scientology Ethics um, and go to those steps. I think it's called Steps A to E, and you can go ahead and just follow those and um, get back in good standings with the church as well. Um, the Jews also follow this, Mormons also follow this, and Judaism also follows this, and the list goes on. So there it is. Um, that's all I'm going to share with you right now. Um, but what I will do is I will go ahead and talk on this point a little bit further in another video besides overviews of Escaping Leah. But thank you so much, guys.
get your copy of Escaping Leah. There's way more information in here than I read to you. Um, get your copy today. Um, ExplosingCrimes.com, Escaping Leah. It's a great book. It's over 200 pages. You're going to love it. Great, lots of documents in the back we'll go over in this overview as well. Thanks so much, and I will see you on Chapter 22.